Okay, so sorry I'm starting so late. I was supposed to start right after Zach, uh, but uh, I lag. I've got ADD. And, um, oh. And you guys need to let me know if this is too obnoxious. But until someone says, yeah, that's lame, it's annoying, I can't understand you, it's too cringe. Until someone calls me up, yo, El Cap, hey, congratulations on your win. That was dope. Uh, and uh, yeah, until until you tell me otherwise, I'm going to keep using this because I think it's hilarious. And fortunately, for those who don't like it, uh, it looks like I fried out the battery already. It didn't last very long last time. But um, OK, so I'm going to continue to use this Gerber dime more for the unboxings. I realize I'm cutting the shit out of stuff. And it's annoying because I'm super OCD and it's annoying as hell. So uh, I'll start with the Blade HQ, I guess. Or which one? Reverb to the max. Yeah. Okay, that was kind of gay. <laughs> that was super gay. All right. Um, do you guys know who the Cramps are? They were, um, I believe, the pioneers. And that's the first I remember of... Um, what's now uh, a whole subgenre of rockabilly called horror rockabilly. So Lux Interior, Poison Ivy, they had all these like alter egos. It was like goth, but horror goth. And Lux Interior was their lead singer. I think he was their founder as well. And he would, oh, he would scream into the mic and he had such a huge mouth. He would literally stick the mic in his mouth. That's how huge his mouth was. One of the best live acts I ever, 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 ever saw. And now you know how old I am. Because of the cramps. Um, and then I lived next door to a guy who had his own uh, horror goth uh, uh, rockabilly um, band. And they were so good. I, it, I felt bad. Like, guys like that should get big, you know? They were so good. Um, it's really cool to, like, live next door like because he lived next door and they would they would practice in the garage so it's like i was getting you know a free concert all the time i i think that's really dope unfortunately right now my neighbors are not that great there's you know some guitarists and there's this one lady who like is like a would-be singer and i don't know how to say this in a nice way but have you ever seen nope don't know what the cramps are cramps with a c like as in cramp uh their biggest hit was uh, human fly, cause I'm a human fly, and I spell F L Y, and I go buzz, 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 and it's just because, <laughs> you know, it was like this whole rock and everything. thing. And um, it was, they had like a goth, like something high school, goth high school cramps. They fucking rock. Yeah, see? No, cramps with a C, but yeah, see? Mirsal, he must be old to know that. Although I heard they're making kind of like a retro comeback because. So the youngsters, I don't know if you guys know, the youngsters are super into retro culture and they're discovering all these old bands and some of them weren't even that well known back in the day. Uh, and they're being like rediscovered now, which is cool. So like, you know, um, yo, CPM, what's up? Okay, so I'm going to start uh, this. Should I start with the battle box or should I start with the, all right. Does anyone have a vote? Uh, Blade HQ and NAFs and Flytanium uh, Donut Dice or Battle box, which is crappy, but I want to see if there's a free gift in there. Saw blasters in a bar. Sorry, I don't know who blasters is. Sorry. But uh, you must be old like me. I should stop saying that. Experienced. All right. Well, okay, I'm going to start with the Blade HQ. Okay, so while this is great for opening... Um, uh, great for opening. Uh, um, oh, wow, look at that. Already a ton of blade play. So uh, uh, I'm going to have to tighten that. Let's see if that works. That, that is loose as all hell. Uh, but um, golly, that, there's just, uh, I just, just lost signal. Okay, so... 
wow, wow this is really good for opening clamp packs is really that that little chisel opening um actual packaging so i'm gonna switch to an actual knife and you guys would probably not consider this an actual knife but this is a knife these days um uh hot pink which is kind of my thing it's less threatening it's also a great uh you know like if you show a girl this you're like oh my god it's pink you know um and it's, you know it's cali legal or whatever and um and it's also so i uh, got the button in the middle which i wanted to try like there's just a trillion variations on knives and this is all the otfs i have are on the side here this one's in the middle which is just one of the variants my muscle memory is on the side so this one kind of drives me crazy but the reason why this is so important this is a, this is how ghetto i am okay uh uh the um oh wait shit. can you guys not see me well tell me is this better or worse just let me know if that's better or worse um oh God, how do i say this so i actually rear-ended somebody in a rental car and the irony is i'm notorious for being on my phone all day long because i played gps game i wasn't even playing the game i was fucking around with a soda and i don't even i never drink soda either so i was fucking around with a soda and i accidentally put my foot off the brake and just ran into him for no reason you know like because there's a lot of traffic on sunset boulevard and so the cars next to me started going right so without just out of the corner of my eye i was dicking around with my soda and i was like oh it's time to go but that lane was moving ours wasn't so i i rear-ended them for no reason and there was like like no real damage either but whatever anyway i dented my front fender and now when i need to pop the hood it's bent just enough that you know how there's the like the secondary latch well either have two people that someone's pulling up but ever so slightly you know a few millimeters like a you know like a quarter of an inch uh or no less yeah less yeah oh maybe a quarter of an inch and um i have to do that um but i'm i'm a solo so i what I do is I wedge this underneath the hood and then kind of wedge the plastic in. And I wedge that part in so that when I pop the trunk, it click, and then it hits the secondary latch. But so this is kind of indefinitely my EDC because I need that level of thickness uh, in order to put enough pressure on the spring to, and the reason why I need to pop my hood all the time is because I don't know if you know, I just got a new alternator and it fried out my battery. Well, the shitty alternator fried out my battery so i have to jump if i don't drive it every day i have to jump start it. and i don't drive every day i do everything i can to avoid driving i have my friends come pick me up and, and stuff like that um and so i'm constantly having to pop the trunk and you know i have one of those portable chargers uh anyway i hope the o lights oh, oh wait another horrible la driver you know the thing is I'm not going to say I'm not a bad driver because I am because I don't pay attention. But the thing is, what
Okay. Yeah, I'm ADD. I'm retarded. I know that's not a PC term because anyway, I thought I plugged in the charger and I didn't because I'm spazzy and ADD. Uh, yeah, in my defense, it's a horrible early driver. I'm not going to say I'm not a bad driver because I'm, again, I'm spacey. As you can see, I'm ADD. I don't pay attention. I'm not a great driver. However, LA, especially here in Hollywood, so much going on. It's not if, but when. It's just a matter of time before something random, stupid, crazy happens. For example, on my intersection right here, there was a guy called Car Jumper. I'm not kidding you. Right here on my closest corner, where if you go on a tour, there used to be an El Pollo Loco there, and they used to say that that was Brad Pitt's first job at that El Pollo Loco. Don't know if it's true or not, but that's what they used to say. Anyway, um, and you've seen that intersection on a million TV shows and movies, but there was a guy there that lived on the, uh, a homeless guy that lived on the, at the bus stop there. And when you come to a stop, he'd jump on your car. And everyone called him Car Jumper until one day he jumped on some guy's car and he just, he, the guy got, the driver got out of the car and just beat the ever loving shit out of him. Um, and he disappeared. And we, never, we never saw him again after that. But, you know, they, there's always something. Uh, uh, that place, that exact place where I accidentally rear ended the guy right in front of the, uh, the, the B of A there that um, they, anyway, um, the, uh, the other day, I, there was later. There was literally this crazy black lady who was essentially naked, uh, just walking around, talking to herself, um, dragging stuff along in the middle of the road. She was in the middle of the road. Uh, this happens on the regular. Um, so there's just always something that, like I said, in the rest of the world or outside of megalopolises, when traffic next to you is going everyone's going but in hollywood there's there's all these clubs and restaurants and cafes people pull over and stop in the middle of the road so sometimes you just stop for no reason it's dumb so yeah you need to pay extra attention that's my excuse um i really shouldn't have okay here we go uh let's see where are we i hope the olight sale came at good time for you i got the best olights on the way okay <laughs> This box here is an Olight sale from like a year ago. I swear to fucking God. And I have yet to unbox it. Like I unboxed the box, but I haven't unboxed the actual lights yet. Finally, I just because I was desperately in need of lights, I, I did unbox two of them just because I, anyway, I, I needed them. Uh, I'm, so I'm going to hopefully get to that today. I forgot to put it in the, in the credits, but um yeah, so I will not be participating in any old light, hopefully in the indefinite future, because, you know, a whole box of these things should be more than enough for every kind of flashlight need I could ever have. So let's, let's see. I'm sorry for you. Let me know if you ever want a light that's not like a Gerber $18 knife. Uh, a light? Oh, do you mean knife like this? Like this crappy thing? By the way, wait, there might be one or two OTFs that are high quality that are like this, but for the most part, if you want something along these lines with these parameters, you know, being hot pink, Kelly legal, et cetera, there's very few and far between. And I don't want to pay a lot for an OTF. I just don't. Um, especially if they're as reliable as this, I don't need a super steel. I think having high grade steel on an OTF, I, I just don't think it's makes a ton of sense because they're not they're not not high, hard use knives because people do but they're you know with the babe play and everything you need to try an o light let me know if you want to experience excellence i have and gave them to people i don't care about i'm sorry you know i think i missed a comment here uh reaver what is reaver sounds good to me another horrible early driver I think I, did i miss something oh uh, light if you need to try, okay. I hope the lights are okay. Detector. I got the best O lights on the way. I'm sorry for you. Little man. If you ever want a light that's not like a Gerber eighty dollar knife, oh, I see, just a shitty knife. Oh, are you talking about this light? Is this shitty? It's it's not a flashlight. Um, I have a I don't care about. Lol, harsh. Oh, well, there goes the 
there goes that shitty thing. So let me let me get back. LOL. Harsh. Uh, knife guys like crappy lights. It's normal. Um, there is that thing. I don't know if it's necessarily true. And it's there's also that thing that gun guys like crappy knives, which I've almost always it's very rare. I had a custom leather slip made for my old light. Cool. I lived in Venice for 10 years. We're talking, uh, we're talking to homeless. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, so you did live in Venice. So you know what it's like. I, there's a huge homeless population in Venice. So you guys, for those of you who don't know LA, LA, uh, Venice, if I'm not mistaken, is the only um, beach in the city of LA. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Every single other beach town is its own town from Long Beach, Redondo Beach, um, um, obviously Malibu, uh, Santa Monica. Um, all of them are their own beach. You know what? That might not be true. There might be a couple other beaches that are part of LA. I'm thinking, what about um, El Segundo? No, El Segundo is its own city. Yeah, see? So, but at any rate, that's why the LA borders are weird because uh, there's this piece that goes off to Venice. And that might also be why Venice is also the shittiest beach town. Uh, lots of homeless. You might have a gang problem. Danny from D's Knives. Maybe I'm blowing it up. Maybe I shouldn't say, but he's from Venice. I have Rovivons and Olights. I, you know, I don't. I've never tried on a Rovivon. I, I've heard a lot of good things. Okay. I use a kerosene rag wrapped around a wooden stick. Cool, cool. That's a good. That's a good idea. I think tar would be better though, you know, because that kerosene will just go up and. Okay, tell me what your guys' experiences is on this. Um, uh, and by the way, a tactical Terry, you might be British to say an actual torch. Uh, we say flashlights here. We don't say torch for flashlight. You probably know that though. But um, yeah. Have you guys had this experience where you put car car use kerosene, which I believe kerosene is basically jet fuel, isn't it? Um, it goes up so fast that it will literally not actually light stuff. Have you ever tried? Like, I've poured a lot of kerosene on shit and tried to light it, and, like, it just burns off, and it's like, that didn't light shit. So uh, if you put it in a, in, on, a, on a rag and a torch, my guess is, there's almost no chance it'll actually light the fire. That's just my, that's just my guess, uh, my hypothesis. But kerosene just burns so damn fast. My zippos work there. Is, is that kerosene? Oh, you know what? That is kerosene, isn't it? Just Bali IG cool stuff. Oh, cool. Okay, here we go. It's a bit of an inside joke. Um, there's not seems to really just like oh, like so I give him crap. Oh, okay, the last something is actually true though. For the autism light. Okay, I thought that might have been the big case because, see, to guys, to non flashlight guys like me, to me, O light is like really good. But I realize for flashlight guys, they're mid, you know. Um, uh, and uh, what's her name? It, it might be, it might be um, Survival Lily or some other German um, or Austrian. Survival Lily is Austrian. Um, that are into flashlight, one of them it might be survival Lily, just absolutely shits on O light because she's had miserable experience. She's had like three or four O lights in a row, just crap out on her. Everyone else loves them. So um, to me, I would never want to spend more than I do on O lights, and I only get them on sale. Uh, to me, that's still just an awful lot to spend on an on a flashlight. Although I'll have to say the performance is such that. I've turned a bunch of people onto them because, you know, just the keychain light that I have, and I'll put it on. They're like, the fuck? Like, you know, normal people have never seen flashlights with that many movements, right? Like, you know, it blows them away. So if I get, like, a full-blown... I haven't even pulled out, like, a full-blown tactical light on anyone yet because people would be like, the fuck is wrong with... You know, it's... You're not allowed to be that tactical, which is why my thing is tactical because... I know, I genuinely know, I, 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 I straddle that line between what is actually tactical and that which is like just overblown. Like that's just too much light 99% of the time for what you need. So, uh, seems, okay, so let's see. Um, I was referring to the wooden stick with the rag and kerosene. Yeah, 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 the torch. Um, 
but yeah, an actual torch. But like, yeah, just in case I thought um, you were making like a pun the way Brits. Um, okay. Just sub survival loot. Thanks, Tactical. Yeah, she's an interesting person. She's very interesting. Um, yeah, let me not go into that. Um, she has good content. You know, she, she tells you how to make like survival bows and she's got the cute little Austrian accent. Um, so her, uh, you know, Joe X is Austrian and um which is why he has access to firearms like you could never do that in germany like i don't know if you've seen joe x's channel but he has a glock and he has a spare og you know what the, those bullpup it's a bullpup isn't it spare og it's a bullpup anyway and he shoots his knife <laughs> he, he just obliterate after he breaks the shit out of his knife then he takes him into this like fucking like serial killer fucking dungeon and he shoots him with his Glock and his Steyr Og until they're just obliterated pieces. I, it's true joy. I swear. Joe X has taken, as far as I'm concerned, he has taken over and conquered the knife world. As far as I'm concerned. He's taken everybody that does, you know, crazy ass shit and just, and just took it to its fullest extent. He murders these knives. And to me, it's really good data. I want to know if you do something ridiculous exactly where it fails it's interesting data it's exactly the opposite of my philosophy on my channel like i'm nowhere near hard use not even close like i'll use a robust knife to cut thread all day long and tape you know maybe some boxes but i mean i just just don't come across i don't live on a farm i don't live in the country you know in which case yeah i totally see the the need for hard use knives you know uh, if you're cutting bales of hay and shit all day long and but this is it's very domestic around here um if you can imagine yeah, so um let me catch up uh, where are we austria is russia <laughs> what does that mean austria is russia i don't understand uh, yeah so we call it austria because it's österreich österreich which is East Reich is empire. So Eastern empire. It's the only country or one of the only country that A, has, you know, empire in its name, but that has like an ordinal direction, you know, East. And it's a very unusual name for a country. And that's because, you know, I, re you know what? That's what I just remembered. I'm reminding myself. It's one of the things I need to, um, research is the thing that always perplexed me about Austria is when you look at modern Austria today, right? Um, it's just a, a minuscule, tiny country, tiny population. Yet historically, it was always the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And the Habsburgs are the reason why we make fun of royal families is they're all inbred is because of the Habsburg family. They married into every single royal family in Europe, all the way from Ka Catherine the Great, the Russian was, is that what you mean? Uh, is a Russian? Um, Catherine the Great is, is a Habsburg. She spoke German. She wasn't Russian. Um, uh, yeah, so all of them are, ha you know, everyone's married into the Habsburg family. And yet to you today, you look at Austria as this mini, 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 tiny little country. And, um, and they controlled this huge territory, parts of Hungary, Romania, Czech. I mean, so many modern countries today, parts of, their parts of Serbia, you know. Um, and of course, you know, World War One and Two was very much, you know, Archduke Ferdinand and all that stuff. That's an interesting conspiracy, too. There's a great German movie about the assassination. Oh, you guys got to see this movie. Uh, Google it. I'm not going to look it up right now, but it's all about this German investigator trying to find out what was the deal behind um, the um, the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand. Because they, I don't know if you know how World War One started, but they blame the Serbs for it. I mean, because it was a Serbian um, group, a terrorist group, an anarchist group, as a matter of fact. Um, but uh, they want to pin it on the Serbians in order to start the war. And that's what started World War One. But there's good evidence now. And I've since verified it since watching the movie um, that he was set up. 
they passed by the same assassin twice. So they were trying to kill him, but he insisted on open carriage. And they went and visited this injured Austrian soldier and he wanted to do this whole thing. And on their way back, they got lost and they actually retraced where they had just gone after there was a failed attempt. I don't know if you know, they tried to shoot him and they went up back along the same route. And this guy who had, you know, the guy who Gavrilik, you know, the, the guy that actually, you know, he had missed his chance to assassinate him. And then here he fucking comes right back. So that's when he threw the thing and, and killed him. So it's just fucking nuts. I swear to God. Um, I, I think they, I think they set him up to be killed. Survival of Joe X, even Dutch burgers. I don't mind them. Yeah, no. Um, at first, the Dutch bushcraft uh, knives channel, like, frankly, I hate it. I was just like, this is so annoying. You know, I can't stand this generation. That kind of thing. You know, like this is total like um, Gen Z humor. Like, it's just annoying and obnoxious. I did like their content. But I was like, this is annoying. Get to the knives. Until I realized, like, it, it took me a second, and I realized their sense of humor is awesome. They, so there's this thing called Gen Z humor where there's no setup, punchline, that kind of thing. It's just doing something to be funny. It's like, it just goes right into the joke. It's like not really a joke. It's, it's become more vague and formless. Again, it took me a while to get it, but I think they're hilarious. And so they're easily, you know, them and, and, and Birdshot are easily the most entertaining knife channels on YouTube. I, you know, cause Bird and Frankie, their interaction is just, is priceless. It's so, I mean, to me, Birdshot is funny, is into entertaining just to watch, even if you're not into knife stuff, cause they're just such, such a cute little couple. So typo? What's a typo? Wait, who's a typo? Um, I love the dish. Oh yeah, they're hilarious. Uh, I like them too, but a lot of people make fun of them necessarily. Yeah, who can you tell me who makes fun of them? Um, like in a bad way, in a mean spirited way, or okay, if you want to see one of their funniest videos ever. Well, I haven't seen too many of their videos, but their video of survival lily is fucking brutal is fucking brutal so survival lily put out an os 8 knife it's kind of sub it's really not that it's really not all that great um she sent her cold steel to joe x and he destroyed it um so she wanted to make her own knife that's a lot like the her favorite knife which is the cold steel srk um, that was her favorite knife. And so she wanted one very similar. So she made her own knife called the APOC and also an OS 8, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a little underwhelming. At, but their video on her is brutal. And she actually asked them to take it down. Although that may have been a misunderstanding because it might have been more like, I don't know, her lawyers or something. But yeah, I mean, because they got permission ahead of time. They're like, we're going to do a satire. We're going to do a parody of you. Like it's, you know, but, you know, of course, Mickey gets dressed up in a, in a, in, gets dressed up in drag you know it's so over the top it is truly ridiculous okay let's see what i got um okay uh so uh this i have these these stickers already this is brand new have you guys seen this before i haven't so this is really cool um hello my name is knife addict blade hq so i am absolutely in love with this i might have to stick this on my computer um that's freaking awesome. Just, I absolutely love that. I need, I need more of those for sure. That's super awesome. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Okay. So this is the Maritech. Uh, these are glow in the dark, uh, tabs. Do you guys know what this is for? Is this for, um, tra are these trail markers? Can you guys tell me? Um, they're called it's M A R zero five zero M A R zero five zero. Let's see how good the glow in the dark function is. And if you're like, why did you get them if you don't even know what they are? I got them because they're glow in the dark. I don't know if you guys know. I'm I I went nuts on the whole glow in the dark thing. It's like one of my sub collections. So anything that's glow in the dark, I'm on it. Period. And my UV flashlight is right here. Where is it? I'm sitting on it. No. What happened to it? 
Where's my UV flashlight? It was right here. It's right here. Where did I put Oh. Uh, I put it where it's supposed to be. How dare I do something predictable? Okay. So here we go. Let's see if it glows. And it does. Glows pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. So you guys let me know. Are those met? Oh, God. That, that's so bright. Look at that. Oh, that glows really well. Hold on. Hey, let me turn this off. Oh, look at how well that's glowing. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wait. It's all washed out. Here. Can you see it? Look at that. It's glowing so well. Bruh, this glows so much better than anything else I have that's glowing. That that's the rest of my glow-in-the-dark stuff up there so that I can look at it when I go to sleep. Okay. Impressed? Um, this is my first set of Maritech stuff, so... We'll see. I just got a whole bunch because I just need to fill up a cart because I wanted the free gift. I know. I'm an idiot. I literally do that just to get a free. Okay. What does this say? Uh, on Joe X's channel, they do, but Joe X seems to have a decent relationship with them. They sent him one or a couple of nights to break. Yeah, yeah. No, they, 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 very, uh, they very specifically said, we're going to send our knife to him to destroy. Like, it was the only right thing to do, you know? Sticker might be worth text plus shipping. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, yeah, that's that's why I don't really order from them as much. So, although you know, I get that go for the Lily's problem uh, with the knife is that she had to complete in the hundred dollar category without a Chinese only app. Um, well, she I think she went with Taiwan. Um, I don't know if that's what you mean, like mainland China. I believe she's making it probably where cold steel makes it their knives i think i think she said she went to taiwan so yeah um tell me if you guys know uh what these are supposed to be used for it's a it's definitely it's a hard plastic it's not flexible i thought it was going to be slightly flexible but it's not a hard 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 plastic but yeah it it definitely feels it's fairly hard uh, plastic, but I mean, you're probably going to say, well, you can use it for whatever you want, you know, which is exactly true. But I think they're meant to be trail markers. But then also, uh, I think if you just want to tie this to a knife or kit or a thing so that you could find it in the dark, uh, which is what I the, the reason why I was going to get it is um, if you guys have gone camping and had a is that called a guideline, you know, to stake your tent down. And you've run into it all night long. So I wanted to see if I can use these to mark them out so people don't have to run into them all night long. Cold Steel has some knives made in mainland China as well, but they're largely all made in Taiwan. Yeah. Um, yeah. The I'm, I'm assuming their 8 CR13 knives, of which there aren't that many, are made in China. But yeah, the majority of them are made in Taiwan. And I think they have a couple made in the US. Is that correct? I think someone said that to me on one of the chat on one of my lives and um obviously they get the machetes made in south africa so everyone assumes uh okapi is probably doing it so you know it's not a huge compliment because cold seals machetes are kind of mid um and there's like it's just like a little piece of flat metal and then they there's like no grind to it and they just put it anyway so there's that these are all stickers we've seen this is a they did a good job with this sticker it's like a beehive i don't know what the point of a beehive is but it just it looks nice it looks like uh like a, a royal seal or something i think it's kind of cool so let's see oh 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 my god i love it way more than i was expecting so um you know i need to get some paracord at some point but you know i, I you know i want to get like hot pink which i have hot pink i have glow in the dark of course um and then, you know, I can't decide on, on any of the other colors. And also, I feel like Paracord is is overpriced, you know? I mean, this was like probably like eight, nine, ten bucks, you know, which that's why um, there's this one channel, Outdoorsman, he's like, I get twine. He's like, you're wasting your money with Paracord. You know, he's like, you know, because I, I, you know, I get my twine, uh, my twine, not twine, the fuck, um, fuck is that, 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 that really, People wrap it around their lighters to use as Tinder. Oh, fuck, 
is that name of that material? I'm bl I don't know why I'm blanking on that. But at any rate, so let me get to it. Uh, you know, uh, they say, yeah, just use the, the cheaper stuff. Why waste your money on very expensive, you know, so like price per, per foot or whatever. Yeah, this is definitely a premium. So which is why I've avoided getting too much paracord. But I saw this stuff. It's called. Um, it's not saying it doesn't say that's funny. It, it but uh, it's called multicolor or something. I don't know if you can tell they use different color thread. It looks um like hallucinogenic almost, uh, but it's like, you know, pink, green, purple. Like it's just depending on the angle. I don't know if you guys can tell depending on the angle. So I want to definitely make stuff out of this, you know, fobs, um, of course, lanyards. I need to, I want to start putting lanyards on all my knives. And this is probably going to be the one since it'll probably match with a large number of knife colors since it's got so many different reflective colors. Can you guys... Tell me if you see that. Okay, I never feel bad uh, buying from Taiwan. <laughs> suck. Okay. Uh, yes, some are made in the U.S. Some Bowies are made in India. Oh, is that right? Okay, and some models were made in Italy. Not sure. They still manufacture in Italy. Yeah. You might be thinking of the uh, original Formax, which I don't. Yeah. You're right. I don't know if they make anything in Italy anymore, but they did for a while, especially obviously the the Formax, which was so grossly. Hey, Hempwick. It, 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 yeah, it's not, uh, but <sighs> they make um, like shoe mats out of them. It's it's just it's. A... Is the hemp wick named John John Wick? Good one. Um... <sighs> I have a. Let's see. Where is my? Where's my little survival letter? Oh, I think it's in my backpack. Yeah, it's over there. You know, it's that super cheap, uh, very, very hairy, uh, if you will. It's a very unrefined. Um, it's and, and again, they make really like they make those really cheap uh, shoe mats out of them. Uh, shoe, was that what it's called? Shoe mat. Anyway, so this is multicolor. I think it's beautiful. Tell me if you can see the reflection of different colors. Does it come off? Because here it, it just it absolutely it scintillates. I, I, I'm I'm so I'm more than pleased with the aesthetics on this guy. So it'll look really nice as like lanyard. See, like this guy, he needs a lanyard. So I want to put like a colorful lanyard on it. A lot of my fixed blades need lanyards. I I'm I'm a huge lanyard fan. I my feeling is why not have a lanyard if you can. That's why I actually get annoyed. I'm the exact opposite. People hate lanyard holes and all that. I, when I get a, a knife and it doesn't have a slot for a lanyard, I'm just like, why? Why do that? Okay. So there's that. Super thrilled. Super thrilled. Uh, let's see. What else is buried in here? Uh, oh, here it is. Okay. Flytanium Desert Warrior Dice. Oh, that's what I should have called it. Looks like that's the number for it. Uh, it's going to wash out, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not having any luck with this lighting. So that's what it is. And there are the dice. Pink. And it looks like there's a couple of uh, 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 Desert Warrior stickers there. It's the Blade HQ sticker. And uh, uh, looks like there's a butterfly back there. Is that Flytanium's? Yeah, Flytanium's logo in, in, the, in the donut is, is in the back there. So there's that. Okay, um, more glow in the tape. So this is the Maritec glow tape, narrow. Okay, oh yeah, they have the wide as well. This is really narrow. Look at that, they vacuum seal it. That's pretty cool. So there's the Maritec glow tape. It's, uh, oh, it's just got a big long um, uh, ISBN number. Okay, hey Randy, thanks. I'm pro lanyards and anti thumb studs. Um, I don't love thumb studs, yeah. Um, I'd prefer either a hole or a flipper. Um, a flipper is also something that I'm starting to wonder. It really kind of sucks. I, it, it occurred to me because there was this, there was this, there was this violence at um, at the 7-Eleven on the corner here, um, and I was just like, Man, I'm gonna have to stab this motherfucker, you know? And and I thought to myself, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, what's the quickest deployment? I realized, you know, flipper tabs really are the fastest deployment. 
Oh, the AK was made there. Oh, okay. Which again, on the secondary market, those cold steel AKs are just are really overpriced. But yeah, no wonder it was one of their Italy ones. Um, okay, so good to know. I, it's that's interesting. People know so much on the. You guys know so much. Okay, so this is. Oh wait, the glow in the dark tape. So. There's the case for the flashlight, and oh, it's on my lap. Great. Okay, let's see how well it glows, and it glows really well. Look at that. That's the part I lit up. Hopefully, you can tell. Let's see if I can. Is this like angled wrong? Doing this all wrong? See that? Oh yeah, you can see that. So, glows really bloody well. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. Very pleased. Maybe it makes me feel like maybe I should have gotten the uh, wide tape as well. So, okay. So that's that with the glow in the dark. Where am I putting my glow in the dark stuff? Over there. Okay. Um, this is uh, Maritech as well. M A R 030. So it comes with these little stickers and. So it also glows well, same material, and I don't remember what this was for. So I'm assuming you stick them uh, for, I don't know, finding your way around in the dark? I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember what this was called. It, it had a name. I think it was something like that, like a guide or... You know, but I think you stick it on the wall so at nighttime you can, you know, maybe put it next to a light switch. I don't know, something like that. But yeah, put it next to your gun safe. I don't know, so you can find it in the dark. Oh, here's more stuff. Okay, so this is the silicone divider is what it's called. Silicone divider. It's called silicone divider glow. Uh, looks like it's just in, let's see. Yep. So same type of glow factor or whatever you want to call it but yeah it's uh and it's silicone so um, you know just purely got it because it glows in the dark you know um, but um uh, let me see where did i put my outwards 10 is i just put it here because i was going to do something with it I was going to do something with it, I said. Where are you? I literally just pulled it out before I recorded, which was one of the reasons why I lagged on starting the recording. It's got to be right in front of me. There it is. Okay. So here's like my little mini survival. Like I'm an Advil, a random ass lighter, a hair tie, and some clips. I, it's, well, I wasn't serious. I just was like, Oh, I should add this to something later and just never really got around to it. Um, uh, like a like a little tiny rubber band, but anyway. Okay, so let's see. And, yep, fits, uh, kind of doesn't fit great. Kind of does, kind of doesn't. Yeah, um, that's weird. It It actually... So if you're going to use this, <clears throat> pardon me, now I'm choking my water bottles over there. That's great. Um, you're going to have to use a ranger band to keep it shut. So, and look it, see, it's kind of messy. See that? See the, can you see the lip? It, it, it's just, too, it's too tall. So I almost feel like it's kind of a fail honestly um the dements are just slightly off so okay so that happened anyway we'll see we'll see i'll figure out what to do you know whatever wait and see what we shall do with it so
uh, not even sure that it's a good use of space. I mean, do you really need a divider? Are you going to die without a divider? You know, I have to decide what it is that I want to truly divide uh, to warrant this. But again, I only got it because it's glow the dark. That's it. You know, I could literally just use it at home for um, bits and bulbs, as they say, little doodads. Uh, so pockets uh well the thing has its proper place hold on did i miss something uh oh here we go i did miss something um okay it's here i have yeah um i have a glow in the dark rough rider it's fine yeah i have most of the series i was going to finish out the series when they had that big rough rider sale but like I don't know their their website was glitchy i didn't get around to it so unfortunately i didn't finish out the and then at that point i was starting to wonder like am i really just collecting the entire moon glow series so i have half of them roughly um i'll start collecting the, the rest maybe at some point but i just i don't feel like i need to have every single one i would do it just to complete the um you know the set and uh to be able to have at least one of most of traditional patterns which again is purely academic i don't care that much about traditionals um stun guns now league and cali along with tear gas easier to explain than stabbing that's cool i didn't know this so that must be new i mean it was always kind of a gray area but anyway uh, can't stand a lanyard or loose knife in my pocket no sir i don't like it i don't like it at all it's clip or nothing so you can't stand a lanyard, but you also don't like a loose. Oh, 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 I see. So you always want it in a slip or something. Yeah. Lanyards are for weirdos. Yeah, I mean, I get it. The majority of people do not like lanyards. And all of you are wrong, by the way. By the way, yeah, you're wrong. You're wrong. So as, you, as I said, I mean, to me, why not have a lanyard if you can have it? Because to me especially uh the minimalist which is over there i have the glow in the dark one the, both of them um and i also have the, uh the minimal uh, the, the the um the uh this was the smoky mountain knife works exclusive d2 micarta and it was the same price as the regular minimalist you know this thing really brings alive how useful that lanyard is especially on little tiny edc fix blades um but again it just it it, it gives you so much uh, uh especially if it's in your pocket it just really makes it convenient to pull it out um, i found so like for example i'm gonna make something out of this this is from walmart it's their little waterproof thing or whatever so let's see that doesn't fit doesn't fit lengthwise so i mean again if i badly 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 need to separate something out i can do something like that if it's if i find it to be utterly utterly important oh, oh, got it. okay and uh, let's see my packets are well organized yeah so you must do you have like slips and all that kind of stuff okay what else have we got here you could cut it with a razor uh yeah that extra lip i was thinking that as i was pointing it out but I just feel like it'll drive me crazy because I don't know that it'll come out exactly straight. And then my OCD mind will start obsessing over that. And I just, yeah, I'd be surprised if I like some pits of other people's language, but never want one. Okay. Yeah, I have. Uh, so let's see. No, you can't see it, can you? Yeah, there. So that one there. Um, I got that 80 20.5 uh, secondary. He filed down the, the, the shark lock so it's less hurty on the delicate finger. And uh, it's got that Spartan uh, bead and that cool looking lanyard. I, I think it definitely adds to the aesthetics for sure. I think it 100% adds to the aesthetics. It'd be good for pills. That was my main thing I was thinking. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, is I was thinking, yeah, for, for, for pills. Um, uh, you know, uh, like uh, anti-diarrheal pills, which I think a lot of people forget. That would probably be 
even more important than like aspirin or or acetaminophen or whatever. I think anti-diarrhea pills will prevent death. Um, and I would put vitamins. I think vitamins will help you tremendously in stress situations. They remind me of those leash backpack for kids. Uh, I love those things. They're so hilarious. I still use those. Oh, yeah, the, the, the backpack for yourself. Yeah, you should. Don't get lost. That line, lanyards are for weirders, is some Puerto Rican says in his videos oh really because he opens boxes on videos i'm going to send him a knife with a big obnoxious language try and mess with him oh cool um what's his uh channel oh the the guy puerto, R puerto rican with knives that channel okay i i haven't i don't remember looking at his videos yet but i am subbed so have you seen the crkt civet i looked at it but i don't remember which one it is is it that super expensive one i hope not because that I like to fold the lanyard against the scale to help fill out the hand, especially on skeleton knives with plenty of hot spots. See, I'm telling you, why have one when you don't, if you can? It it always gives you something. I mean, at the very least, it gives you some cordage. Um, it gives you this. It gives you something more to hold on to. Um, uh, with fixed blades, you can create like a little bracelet out of them. It gives you a lot more chopping power. There's just so much that yeah, Puerto Rican with a knife. Yeah, I am subbed to his channel. I can't remember his content, but cool. Lanyards are for weirdos. Okay, that's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, this goes in here. Sorry. I'll lose track. Oh, yeah. This, this is a cool Okay. Okay. And so here is uh, another donut, Desert Warrior. Um, a de desert warrior dessert warrior so he's got looks like it kind of looks like he's got an otf but it has a guard so i think it's kind of like a savivi ish looking knife um it's hard to tell but anyway little, little donut knife guy okay and oh okay uh the speeder the speedy stitcher so um the um Dave Canterbury's 10 C's. One of them is canvas needle, right? So um, I decided to get this uh, to be able to sew more heavy duty stuff because I don't have high gauge needles. Uh, and I think I might go ahead and get the speed, the speedy stitcher um, actual, um, their little handle thing with the little thing. So um, these are the replacement needles for that. I thought I was just going to put these into the little survival kits, you know? Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and actually get the speedy stitcher as well. And so here's the, the thing it's called, it's, um, BN 135 needles. It's a four S eight S and eight C needles and made in Vietnam, silver Creek leather company. Oh, oh, okay. So you can do leather with these. Oh, that's good to know. I'm kind of thinking of starting to, um, forage scrap leather behind some of the leather manufacturers down here downtown well i've been thinking about this for years but um and just getting a bunch of scrap leather and trying to do something with it just to learn how to work with leather because you know all of us love leather right okay. do you have a bank line um i have um yeah so i got that cheap um i got that cheap uh uh uh, Ozark Trail stuff, which is a round bank, a kind of bank line. And then I have the Atwood, that company, you know, um, I have their micro cord, um, which I think is a round bank line. And then I have some, uh, of, you know, the, con you know, construction where they make, um, the like plumb lines and such that cord, which is a, again, a round bank line. So I don't know enough about the exact specifics of what uh, bank line, you know, because they have different numbers and obviously they support different amounts of weight and stuff. So I don't know which ones would qualify to be sufficient um, strength or tensile strength to qualify. But yeah, I have around bank line type of stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah, I have like micro cord. I have different you don't call them gauges i have different gauges of cord 
gauge is for metal, right? What, what do you call different thick? Is it just thicknesses? But you know, um, but yeah. So you know, I have like regular paracord, and um, I have fake paracord. Um, I have lesser paracord which is like 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 300 like so this is your standard 550 but they have higher stuff and then they have like 350 paracord like 300 paracord stuff like that that are rated you know lesser um and then i have like outright fake paracord like that didn't even list anything just as paracord which you know yeah go ahead put that on a parachute and see if you survive yeah i don't even have a leather wallet or belt anymore do couches count yeah of course couches count um so when they make a couch uh, generally they get very expensive if they use they want to use the top grade that's why they get very expensive and then on the bottom and and back and sides they use the very lesser so yes leather couches count because you get to see the wide array of leather qualities when you're when you have a couch you'll have you can have potentially all the way from the top to some of the lowest so yeah absolutely it counts a lot of older videos on kits you might like great i'm going to check that out um i don't think they'll let you find a creative way to put your channel uh uh, uh in the in the chat here and um i'm I, i'm obsessed with looking at kit videos and some of them are very old but i'm just that's actually one of the ways i got into you know the whole edc blah 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 you know because i'm kind of like a prepper yeah i just wanted to be prepared um and um um it helped in a lot of ways accelerate my knife obsession um, i mean i was already into it but like it just it got me even more um it allowed randy wsg okay oh it's randy's but obviously no apostrophe right there's no apostrophe um is it like well anyway um so it'll be like this let's see if it Let's move Randy's. I might already be subscribed. I don't know. Is it that? Um, and it's a YouTube channel, right? Uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, the kits. Um, oh, that, yeah, that's where I got into the tiny knives. So I have like little tiny micro knives. So Rough Rider makes this ridiculously tiny knife. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, here it is. They have several of these versions of these incredibly tiny knives have you seen this i'm pretty sure i mean it it doesn't really have an edge on it but i want to try to put an edge on that and obviously that's next to nothing it's basically meaningless but it's cute it's fun and um i got into this because i mentioned this in my last live stream is um there's a guy uh, who does a lot of these kits and he kept going smaller and smaller and smaller until he made a keychain one out of a tic tac little a tiny little tic tac and he had like a miniature knife in there and that's when i became obsessed with um, miniature knives because i'm weird and it's fun to be weird can't take yourself oh sweet okay so yes i got pink um this is my first time myself purchasing aftermarket scales um i have secondary uh, you know knives that people have uh, put on the second i got off the secondary that have put their own scales on but i've always hated getting uh secondary scales for knives because you're just bumping up your knife 20 40 60 dollars you know so a 180 dollar knife is now a 240 dollar knife and i just it never f sat right with me I finally pulled the trigger because a it's pink as you know one of my sub uh collections is pink knives um b it's an upgrade because the honey badgers come with that grn frn this is actual g10 so it's a worthwhile upgrade oh shit, is this even the right one for small i'm pretty sure i got this yeah i have this i only have one honey badger <clears throat> So yeah, I thought uh, it would be worthwhile to go ahead and give it a shot. So this is my, and and then and and the funny thing. So this is a GHS pink G10 handles with backspacer pink small HB4060. That's what it's called. HB4060. Now, um, um, what was I gonna say? What was I talking about? At any rate, yeah. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger. Oh yeah, yeah. What's annoying is I think these were twenty bucks which 
I mean, that's the price of the knife, right? Honey badger is like 20 bucks. So again, that's why it's like annoying. It's like, I, we used to tease my friend. He had this shitty, shitty car and then he bought these really expensive tires and rims for it. And so we kept teasing him. We're like, bruh, you bought tires that are worth more than your car, you know? And so it, that just became this whole thing. So it's like, you just bought, you know, like racing tires for your fucking shitty ass Volkswagen bug or something, you know? So I bought scales that are about the same price as the, the knife. Again, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. But however, Honey Badger punches way above its weight in terms of its make, you know, it's, it's fit and finish. It's, um, it's just, they, they just make incredibly high value knives. The work sharp should sharpen. I, I'm, I'm thinking it might. I really think it might. It might just be able to do it, barely. I might be able to get into the clamp, et cetera. If not, you know, I have ceramic rods and stuff that I might try. Actually, I'd have to put it on the clamp. But yeah, I think I'm going to give it a shot anyway. It, it'll be fun to give it a shot. And that is if it's hardened. That's another thing too. It might not even be properly heat treated. There is a company, Veritas, that makes premium traditional woodworking tools that makes fully functional miniature versions of the tools. It's interesting. There is a market for micro tools too. That's interesting. I guess if you want to do very super um, uh, delicate woodworking, like for super, super delicate. So Veritas. Um, yeah, I have several woodworking kits, all budget, of course. I want to test them out first. And um, I want to get into that, do spoons and stuff at first. Honey Badger Skills are booty. G10 is a massive upgrade. Exactly. That's So Goondocks uh, hits it right there is um, they, they don't really have great scales. So that's why I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and upgrade the scales because it'll be worth it because I'm not missing out on much. I mean, don't get me wrong. They call it Honey Badger and then they have the honeycomb, you know, uh, pattern on it. Um, it doesn't look that bad. I think it looks a little corny and it does have functional, you know, having the honeycomb pattern. It's just, I don't, I'm not in love. I'm not in love with their scales. <laughs> you want me to harden it with my Zippo? Like, Hard, no, I, well, I have a torch too, you know, so I can harden it with the torch and then quench it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think I'd mess with it. I, I, I wouldn't know how to do it anywhere near remotely correctly. Okay, this is as usual, lagging like a motherfucker. I'm taking forever. Oh, okay. Um, again, this is a clear cargo Dyneema bag. So, um, again, just an ISBN number. So, Dyneema is a new material that. Um, uh, whatever you call that, pound for pound is stronger than steel. So I guess it's a little bit like silk. I think silk is super strong. Anyway, you know what I mean. But it's uh, it's a new material, I guess, you know, space age material or whatever. Um, as you know, I'm really just into EDC pouches and kits and such. Um, so, and it's see-through, which is helpful if you're ever doing like inspections or whatever they can see. And also it's useful to us, the user, because if it's see-through, um, it uh it really helps with organization you can just look right at it. it a big problem for me is when i start filling out i've like loads of pouches like literally every time i look in that it's like oh yeah this is in here oh yeah this is in here it's like every single time i open that same pouch i literally always say oh yeah this is in here or oh that's where it was which is even worse it's like fuck i was looking for something i was like oh i put it in one of these pouches I don't know if you guys are that way. I am. So it's got uh, a cool little uh, whatever, like a lanyard, you know, it's a form of a lanyard, I guess. But, you know, you can affix whatever to that. You could, you know, um, and then, of course, the carry handle and good zipper, good zipper. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. And it might. Yep. It's a YKK zipper, which, by the way, guys, you guys might think, oh, YKK, they're literally the best zippers. They aren't. But, yeah, they are good, you know, um, in terms of the highly produced yeah they're the best but there are better zippers out there than ykk by the way so as you can see it's pretty um and i mean it feels strong i guess i don't know you can feel the texture of that dyneema thread i think it's just plastic with this dyneema thread to keep it strong i think that's what it is so anyway look forward to filling that out i might make this my new official edc pouch although it might be too big so like so i showed this way back when it's a uh, Ferragamo Salvatore Ferragamo I think it was like a free gift um, and it, you know it's got uh, uh, you know a sleep mask uh, earplugs um, pair of socks it's for travel you know uh, 
um, like the, whatever, a lip balm and blah, blah, blah. So this is for plane travel. Of course, I'm going to take this gear out and I'm going to see if, as you know, I got my obsession with um, pouches. So I'm going to maybe make some sort of EDC pouch type thing for this. Um, you know, I've got these kinds of things with the, oh, this is shitty. Oh, this is that crappy um, brand from, um, uh, this is actually United Cutlery, by the way, M48 Ops. Uh, this is from, you know, Bud, Bud, Bud K carries a lot of their stuff. Um, so this sort of a thing, you know, anyway, um, so as you can see, it might be a little bit on the big side. Yeah. So, and then this is the, from the last battle box. I'm really thrilled about, I love this pouch. It's really kind of one of my first kind of high end pouches. I have max adventure or max expedition, excuse me. Oh, shit, it's already an hour. I'm sorry. I'm just going on and on, guys. Uh, I have the a Max Expedition. I have their Micro one. It's the, I believe it's the smallest one, or at one point was the smallest one. That's one of the ones that I carry around in my backpack as my sort of backup EDC kit. And that's the one that every frigging time I look at, it, it's like, oh, yeah, this is in here. Oh, I love this in here. So it's just annoying. Oh, shit. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, it's not new, really? It's it's not new. It's like Spectra. I think it's an Aramid. Okay, well, I love for you to tell me that. I don't know anything about these. Um, I don't know what Spectra is. Obviously, it's some sort of thread or whatever. Um, an Aramid is that like a type of poly? Uh, what do you call polycarbon or what do, you, what do they call those? Yeah, is that is it one of those? Um, anyway, that'd be great. Uh, Z packs does great. Dyneema made in USA. Okay, good to know. I have to try to remember that. Um, I love Dyneema. Practically weightless, waterproof, and stronger than ripstop. Cool. So thanks for filling me in, guys. This is uh, absolutely new to me. Lots of backpacking brands are switching to Ecopack versus Dyneema. Oh, that is harder to acquire. Oh, I like Dyneema more, but Ecopack is nice too. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. I, I would have never known that. I appreciate that. The, uh, this information is great. I cut my teeth on Bud King. Kennesaw Cutlery. Absolutely. Um, I went backwards. I started off with other stuff. I you know, not a country boy. So I didn't actually know about Bud K until afterwards when people were making fun of the stuff. And of course I went and spent a bunch of money there like an idiot. I just, I had to, I had to have that Bud K experience. It's just, oh, air, there, okay. Aromatic uh, poly, polyamide. Amide. Okay. Yeah. Um, makes sense. Um, Dyneema's main application is for boat ropes and for sales. Fascinating. That's just some material science just blows me away. It's so interesting. Um, that they're able to come up with these materials that are just so strong. I guess I don't think Dyneema is me because I was climbing on Dame's slings like 15 years ago, right? So in my world, 15 years ago is new, but I see what you mean, you know? Um, you know, polyester is 100 years old, you know, or nylon or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, so yeah, 15 years is new to me, and especially how long it takes tech to filter in. Um, so for you, Dyneema slings, you know, in 15 years ago, they're going to jump right on that because that's probably probably right around when it came out because that's a very specialized field where it's terribly, terribly, terribly necessary. So yeah, you're going to get exposed to that stuff in your uh, subculture very, very early on, far, far before it's commercially viable for other kinds of products to start incorporating it, you know, because over there people will pay premium dollars. So manufacturers are gonna in, in you know incorporate it right away even if it jacks up their price so i got my first cold steel for bud k wow they used to sell bud k uh because i'm pretty sure they don't have any anymore in ventura uh, what about ventura i forgot what we were talking about ventura county i'm 45 so 15 years like two nights sleep to me <sighs> don't get me started let me tell you i know um, again, another reason why for me, 15 years ago is not that long ago. Like, it's just depressing. Like when you talk to young people like, oh yeah, you know, way back when, you know, like a long time ago. And it was like, this was like six, seven years ago. It's like, oh God, that was a long time for you. Wasn't it? Like, you know, if you're young, six, seven years ago, it's like, oh, I was, I was in college back then or I was in high school. It's like, oh my God, bro. Hey, Michael Morgan. Thanks for joining. Yeah, see, all of us are the same age, I could tell. 
our references are like that. We're all uh, Gen Xers. Okay, so yeah, I love this. Why did I show this? Oh, yeah, I wanted to compare the size. Oh, okay, the size is about the same, although obviously that thickness. I'm not saying that this is going to be my EDC pack. I just am experimenting with gear loadouts, how much something will fit, what sort of stuff. I just, I've yet to finalize a single pouch. I'm, just, I'm trying to get to that point, but I'm just stuffing it out with whatever gear I have um, to see what loadout different loadouts might look like or could the shape they could potentially take or whatever um oh here's another one d generation xers grumpy's here oh yeah hey oh i see okay uh yet again so this is called the utility double-sided pouch black um it was relatively inexpensive um again like this so it's smaller than that um there's a couple things i liked about this a it's too big so it doesn't fit that parameter for me but what it does have is that grommet which i realize you can make your own grommets but um i want to be able to attach a taint chain or lanyard or something to it because um if i do not attach it to my body i will lose it 100 percent Sure enough, recently I grabbed the charging cable, ran out the door. It's now gone. I just, it, it was the only thing that wasn't attached to my body. So I just really need to. So it's got a zipper on top and it is a YKK zipper. I think these are the same manufacturer. Sorry, I don't remember who it is. The, okay, so the inside of this is like vinyl. So I guess it's going to be more or less waterproof. Um, that grommet makes this pocket small. So there's that. Um, and then uh, I guess pen, maybe a multi-tool, maybe a knife, I don't know. So yeah, so again, maybe I'll turn this into my left back pocket EDC uh, wallet or pocket organizer or whatever, it might be too big. I don't know, I'm gonna think about how to attach that. So, you know, I've got all these in a way. Uh, it's just, I've got way too much uh, EDC clutter. So that happened. Okay, and here we go. I think these are going to be the posters. Oh, oh. No, never mind. Okay, I didn't get, this isn't the one with the posters. Oh, this is the second order that I got. The first order was in sale, but that one was on hold. I remember it took them a while to send it. So that should be coming probably tomorrow. So yeah. Get ready for the next unboxing. <sighs> okay. Why I do this shit is beyond me. I had I had told myself, like, do you guys ever tell yourself, like, don't do this? Don't ever do that, you know? So they have these things called sugarcane knives, right? And I had seen them for years, and I was like, don't ever get that. You're never going to need it. Don't don't get into that over collecting stuff and you just keep getting other shit that you don't need or don't use, blah, 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 blah. Then I saw, I think it was a documentary or something, and they were showing sugarcane workers in Brazil. And I was like, fuck, now I gotta I gotta get one of those sugarcane knives. And I, I don't know if I told you I was at my cousin, and my cousin bought a house in the Hollywood Hills just above the comedy store. And he's his his backyard is or back hillside is infested with bamboo. And I tried cutting it. I'm going to do a whole thing on that. Um, it was impossible to cut. So now I'm curious, would a sugarcane knife do better? So this is Tramontina, which is that Brazilian company that makes the very inexpensive, um, not super fine fit and finish, but definitely worker, a worker knife. So let's see. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to have to cut that thing. How can I be surrounded by knives and take this long to actually find one? There it is. Okay, here it is. Tramontina, made in Brazil. 
Um, oh, okay. I thought this was maybe some sort of a sharpened thing, but I think that must be a hook to actually grab stuff and pull it towards you. Let's see. If you're cutting, would you do this and come back to cut again? I don't know. I'm wondering. Anyone that knows? And look at that. The grind doesn't start till that high up. So you're really meant to just swing, swing, swing. Um, yeah, you know, just awful wooden handle. Just, this is terrible. Uh, pinned. Looks like it's stainless steel pins. Um, yeah, I mean, just, you know, not astounding fit and finish, but these things are dirt, dirt cheap. Uh, I don't know if you know, I think Tramontino makes just about the cheapest, um, you know, worker knives out there, but uh, they're better than like that Colombian brand, El Gavilan, or a lot better than them. Um, there's a huge burr on this side. I can feel it, but I mean, it means they did sharpen it. You know, I mean, it's sharpened. Let me see. I keep putting that envelope away. It's here. I know it's here because I just saw it before I was setting up. Keep moving stuff and then forgetting where I moved it because I, I have trouble concentrating long enough. Yeah, it was just here. Oh, here we go. Here's Bud K, so. Yeah, pretty rough cut, but uh, it cut. There's definitely a burr. Yeah, oh God, I can feel it the whole way along. So I'll just have to clean up that edge. I'll just knock the burr off, maybe on a ceramic rod or something. And this will maybe if it works out that not that rawhide uh bone that I, it's so it's soaking now and it's already become pliable so hopefully maybe by tomorrow i'll try and un, un unfurl it and see and so maybe this will be you know because i don't know how else to get or make a sheath for that if anyone knows um i'd be curious i don't don't know what to do with i guess i'll just use this in the meantime so, okay, so there's that, and um, okay, and let's see if there's any other little doodads left in here. Okay. Yeah, sorry I'm going way over. You guys definitely make these lives go too long with all the, the chit-chat. And I am a chatty cafe for sure. So let me go back. Yeah, Polly Shore's a family. Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, okay, so shit. Way behind. Okay. So let's see here. It says Mimo. What's Mimo? Mimo? Is Mimo somebody? Who's Mimo? A better name than Dopey. Okay. I have a five gallon bucket full of ODC stuff for pockets. It, yeah. Here, 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 let me one up you. I have two. I have two. So, plus I have like three cabinets over there. I just, I have like one, two, two I have like four, like four Tupperwares. I've got like 30 ammo cans. I have way, way overkill on that. It's so annoying. I'm, I just hate, I hate myself. I swear to God. I just, I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not overdoing it. I really am. I, I know it's like addiction level stuff. It's too bad. Don't ask me about my medical shit. Oh, really? You got a lot of medical shit. Okay. Cane knife. Yeah. I've always wanted to go to the comedy store. Yeah. Um, you know, they have like a back room and stuff too. So I have a, a childhood friend who represents uh, comedians and half my friends are stand-up comedians. You know? It has a hook on the end, right? Uh, didn't Polly Shore's mom, Mitzi, own the comedy store? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I think they still own the other ones that have opened up all over the place. Polly just did a show in Portland. Okay. She did, yeah. Um Anyway, I could tell you stories, uh, but I've been using the same one on my barbecue. You mean the cane knife? What else did I show? The cane knife? Uh, 
it pulls off shoots and leaves. Oh, so you drag it like that? Interesting. Is that right? Is that oh, okay? Interesting. Yeah, Polly Shore's family owns it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You know, he has a sister too, and it's, you know, they're like the experts. It's just, anyway, only way Polly could get on stage. I, you know, don't get me started, please. I just, yeah, whatever. Oh, okay. I, that's what you meant. Okay. You're really going to actually, okay. She made him work for it. He said, oh, really? His first set, she basically told him he sucked ass. Eh. But that may be true, but he still got access that way, you know? Um, I thought that Polly Shore movie where he had to go to be help was absolutely hilarious. I liked it. I, I liked it. And 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 you guys, who was the girl? Carla Gugino. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Who's like a major, major. I mean, she's had a career ever since then. That was her, guys. You guys probably forgot. And of course, Tim T Tiffany Amber Thiessen was in that from uh, Saved by the Bell. She played the other woman. Um, it's not the worst movie. It's not. I, I'm telling you, like, it's easy to dismiss because it's just a sort of, you know, that kind of movie. But yeah, launched her career. I heard five gallon buckets and my mind went directly to spaghetti. Really? You can make five gallon buckets worth? I've never made them. I've never even seen them at spaghetti. That sounds cool. Sounds like fun. Okay, please, let me get to this. And we are going to unbox this bloody... So, I watched a battle box. Um, they have trekking pole. So, battle box is huge this time, okay? So, I'm just like, oh, yes. You know, yeah, the axe. You know, something fucking dope. Trekking fucking poles, guys. Trekking fucking poles. Oh, well, I just doxed my address. Trekking poles? Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, I'm so disappointed. Trekking poles? This is their big... Oh, that's why I stuck around. I stuck around an extra month. I just wanted to get their... I think they had... Yeah, they had like a 60% off coupon or 40% off. So I got one more, which was the last one, which I was actually pleased with more or less because... It had this, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and and then I went ahead um, and stuck around. It's like, oh, you know, trust me, a hundred is gonna be great. Bunch of free gifts, this, that, and the other. We're gonna make it big. Trekking fucking poles, dickhead. I'm sorry. I just that main guy. I mean, how is that guy even on TV? He's so boring. Um, he's so terrible at like public speaking and performance type of stuff like his if you watch his unboxing videos they're like they're cringy bad i mean they're painful to watch um he just comes off as a gigantic d-bag i'm sorry it just and you know battle box has been more or less kind of underwhelming for a very long time now don't get me wrong they pioneered uh, i'm not saying they're literally the first they probably weren't but they made it big um and they've just been very underwhelming for a very, very long time now. Uh, let's say I'm curious to see what brand of trekking poles. Cascade Mountain is a really good budget brand. Maybe you got those. Cool. Great. I'm glad uh, you can give me the commentary because I know nothing about trekking poles. I've got a cheap pair of aluminum ones. So, you know, um, yeah, let's see. Um, he, he, he insists this was his favorite budget uh, brand. Like, you know, you know, like these are the best, and they do this, that, and the other. I was like, looks like some fucking basic-ass trekking poles to me, asshole. I, he's just, I don't know. He just seems slimy to me. I just, he's just too, he's too used car salesman-y, you know? Like, he doesn't come across as, like, genuine, authentic, you know, down-home kind of thing. It just, I don't know. I don't buy it. I, I just, I just really just don't buy it. Um, it's just way too much shtick. Kind of reminds me of the Duck Dynasty guys, you know, who were, like, like you show pictures of them when they were younger they were like all clean cut preppies with like polo shirts and like bermuda shorts and now all of a sudden they're all like rugged and earthy like it's a fucking act y'all like don't please so there it is um yeehaw they made it to 100 
yeah okay so i did again i did see this um yeah whatever and i'm glad uh, yeah the the uh the custom knife which is black g10 and 1095 like wah, wah, wah. like 1095 okay give us my card then at least i, I don't know um, so yeah so but let's see uh then I guess they have these discount rust prevention gun cases. Oh, interesting. Okay. Wow, look at that. Oh. I don't know what is this? Fousey? Is this that greetings from space? What the fuck is Fousey? Oh yeah, that's what I thought. It is. It's this thermal case thing. Okay. Um, every purchase helps a vet or first responder. 20% off of subtle patriot? Subtle patriot. It's subtle about being patriot. That's weird. Built to serve. Okay. Oh. Oh, it's a golf bag brand. Okay. There you go. Okay. So, uh, cold protection, heat protection. Okay. So, antimicrobial, battery life, extends battery up to four times. Come on, please. Sink proof, floats in water, water resistant, drop proof, protects from. Drops up to nine feet. Maximum device protection for every adventure. Attachment loops, internal pockets, and more. Climate proof, germ proof, drop proof, sink proof. Um, the XP3 series, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read the whole damn thing. Easy open pull tabs, internal stash pocket, multi-point attachment. So it looks like they got multi um, uh, molly stuff there. Antimicrobial. So talk about tactical. I mean, this is a little too tactical. This is just seems kind of corny pull here look at that oh cool that's yeah, good it's a yeah, good box really good box so that's what it comes with the thermal capsule owner's manual there's no way it's going to increase your life by four times give me a fucking break four times okay so these are pretty nice rubber almost like silicone feels like and uh, there's the uh molly attachment and yeah it's definitely got some thick foam so i guess that's the thermal part um and then oh velcro sucks okay and then so yeah i guess you put your phone in there so is that a mistake look at they put the real tree upside down look they put it upside down that can't have been on purpose they're giving us factory seconds That's upside down. Fucking bastards. They're giving us factory seconds. And then there's the real tree over there logo. Real tree fishing, it's called. Cannot fucking be right. That, I'm sorry. I just, maybe they did it on purpose. If so, I'm wrong. But I think that's fucking scandalous bastards i have black diamond at msr trekking poles i think it's different msr than mountain safety research but i don't use them i like the black diamond ones okay probably ozark trail Woo! let me get right straight to them then guys since um okay oh it's called uh ruck and river there's not anything about that No, I don't even want to open these. I, I've I seen them from his thing. It just I have trekking poles. I don't even use my trekking poles. How are you gonna use trekking? All right, and then uh, squatch rope, squatch rope, Maine, USA. So it's uh, hemp, I believe, and it's I think it's treated. Peel, cut, ball, burn. That's what it says. Peel, cut, ball, burn. Um, I think I might put this in here in this in my little pouch. Yeah. See, this is what I like about this size. It seems to fit all the um, sort of uh, like go bag uh, type size. So, you know, I think I'm going to just throw this in here for now. I, don't know. I mean, but I'm not like a wilderness guy. This is like, here's the thing. A lot of this stuff is like wilderness, nature, outdoors type stuff. But I'm, I, you know, I need an urban go bag. I do not. I'm not going to need to start a fucking fire. 
I'm going to be worried about putting fires out. I'm not going to be worried about making one. Please. You know? Whole fucking town's going to be on fire. Um, anyway, so there, there's that. Um, congratulations on... There is a Batarix in this box? What's a Batarix? Oh, power card. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, outdoor element. Uh, thanks for being part of the Mission 100 box. Takes 30% off your next purchase of any OE gear on our website. Whatever. Bunch of bullshit. Yeah, so... Uh, by the way, zero with the free gifts. So I wonder if they're like, anything sent to California, let's fuck them over. Bastards. Anyway, this is that battery. Right? So these are those uh, disposable uh, charging um, uh, charge card. Let's see. Um, lithium. Sweat or damaged. Um do not attempt to reuse, charge, or disassemble. After usage, recycle, dispose batteries according to local regulations. So, yeah, this is the one use thing. I'll put this in my go bag. So, you know, um, it says uh, in his unboxing thing, he says it lasts eight years. I should probably write on here the date. Yeah, eight years shelf life, it says. Who knows if, well, anyway, we'll see. So there it goes. It's back here. Not a bad idea. Um, definitely one day may be like, heck yeah. I'm glad I had that. So anyway, we will see. So yeah. Um, fuck battle bots? I don't know. I mean, so yeah, not, not in love. Not in love. Yeah. Yep, see, never heard of them, so they're just nothing. Uh, what the ruck is that <laughs> exactly? Uh, use them to keep them at six feet. I'm, you know, I just, I, what am I gonna do? <sighs> ruck and River sounds like the name of a couple frat boys. I know, it's just, it's just like, underwhelming is a very underwhelming description for Battle Box. Yeah, it, yeah. <sighs> Eight years, then it implodes and turns into an Earth-ending black hole. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's going to create a um, uh, a tear in space-time fabric. Uh, okay, let's do this. Uh, if they were sword poles, that would be something useful. No, that that's kind of what I was getting at. Is if you're going to battle fucking box, okay? If you're going to include trekking poles, have even if it's gimmicky as fuck, you know, like. I don't know, like tactical grip or something. I don't fucking know. But they're just basic ass fucking poles. And he's like, oh, I really like this because, uh, you know, clips. It's like all of them fucking do that. I'm sorry. Why am I being such a rageaholic today? I'm just annoyed. I haven't eaten in a couple days either. So that happened. And I've like really dehydrated. It's my fault. So. Uh, let's do some Olights because I need to start putting these Olights to use. Oh, yeah. And then this thing. Um, uh, it's bone broth, uh, which is good. I don't know if you guys know bone broth is the latest rage because, um, you know, uh, people are, you know, like women, of course, they usually push these types of trends, you know, getting the collagen into your system. It's the newest version of anti-aging stuff. So collagen is in um a few years ago i was putting in my coffee every morning i just forgot about it i still have some i just got out of the habit but yeah so collagen is the big thing now these days g-lock shrekking poles what's g-lock is that a specific thing uh, even a hidden knife in the handle or something cheese like that i know you know uh or like a like a like a hit like a a thing that unscrews and it's got like a empty capsule inside that you can put something it's just it's like i said it's just basic it's really basic and he's like make it seem like oh these are these great trekking poles they're literally just trekking poles what no more stem cells huh? oh oh yeah um i see what you mean yeah collagen i mean look i'm one of those that we should use the hell out of stem cell technology i 
you know, we just have this very puritanical culture that's like, oh, no stem cells. You're going to start harvesting babies. I mean, shit. I'm sorry. We shouldn't harvest babies. <laughs> if you're not born a fetus, fucking let's use those stem cells. I'm sorry. That sounds horrifying. I, as a society, I get, I get, I guess, I, I guess, I get why that could be a slippery slope and very dangerous indeed. But I mean, stem cells are the future, man. It's just once we get over, anyway, we passed a law here in California ensuring that we would use stem cells. I voted against it, but for political reasons, because um, it was a way of getting out of paying for it, blah, blah, blah. It, you know, and, and the research was already going there anyway, et cetera, et cetera. So it was just, it was, it was, a, it was a money grab. But of course, it won by an overwhelming majority because people are pro use of stem cells. They didn't realize it was actually a, a very cynical attempt by the industry to go for a big money grab. You know, it's that that shouldn't be us paying for it anyway. That's that's that a little bit more technical. I again, I do research on these things, and it's not always the most positive thing. So here we go. Okay, uh, I I got the Open Two. Um, uh, I think this was free if you bought like over $300 worth, I think. And they had just, uh, it was like Open 2 Pro, I think had just come out. So this was what's left over the Open 2, I think. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's got all the, you know, 120 lumens, blah, 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 five lumens, 16 minutes. Oh, so it doesn't last very long, the light. So this is how they come. Like they always have this, I love the packaging on OLED. So they have this pull tab thing. And then, wow, this is really nice. So here's here's their little verbiage here. And then, oh, wow, look at that. It's on this little plastic case. Oh, my God, that's so cool. They've got the, over here, they've got the refills over here, charging cable there um press oh wow look at that that's how you get it out that's man they do a great job with the packaging i'm sorry oh my god it's a bolt action i'm sure you guys knew that i i'm sure i read it but oh the action is nice okay new fidget toy um so okay uh and then how do you get this out of there Okay, there's the charging cable relatively short, and I guess they say push down. Yep. Yeah. Wow, they did a good job with this packaging. When you push down on that blue arrow, it must have a ramp that, that forces it up so you can get it out. So um, let's see. Is it already in? Is it already in there? There's a red thing there. Are you supposed to peel that off? Or is that a fake? Is it a fake pen cap in there? Oh no, it's the pen. So this is this is a just a refill cartridge. So I'll just put that back. Um, like, ugh. Okay, yeah. So it just fits right back in there. So, um, oh look. Okay, so there's the laser. Does it work? What? Where is the laser coming out of? Am I tripping? That's not the laser. That's just like a a red light to see something. Oh, I see. And then Oh. Ooh. How do I get the red light back though? Oh wait, was that a warning that the battery slipped going out or I think I need to read the instructions on these things. Okay, anyway, um I'm blind, first of all, right now. 
And um, I'm not exactly sure if I want to actually EDC and risk losing this. I mean, I would literally have to tie a frigging lanyard to it, you know, to make sure I wouldn't lose it because it's too valuable a pen. But the reason I did want it is because if I actually did have it in my breast pocket, that would be the most convenient place for me to carry a, a, a flashlight just that I needed two seconds. The Borvo bone broth is supposed to be awesome for post-hike work, workout replenishment. Yeah, sure. Uh, a lot of my hiking friends are on it now instead of coffee. Oh, cool. Oh, Glock. Oh, okay. Glock trekking poles. <laughs> that would be cool. Okay. The red light is to keep from blinding people at night. We're all switching to red lights for night hiking. Easy on the old, old eye strain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have uh, red lights. And, and yeah, I've gone night hiking. And yeah, you know, people brought, you know, their, their red lights and stuff. But I... I no longer know how to turn on the red light. There. Now it's working again. Anyway, I'm going to have to read the... Um, I'm going to have to read the... Uh, the instruction manual uh, to make sure I know how to actually use this thing. So, okay, let me put this aside for now. And let's get to... Uh, this is the Olight M2R Pro Warrior. So 1800 max. So this will be like my biggest, you know, in terms of like my maximum. Uh, Roxanne, you don't have to. Uh-huh. Put on the red light. No, go ahead and turn on that red light. Yeah. Roxanne. Okay. So uh, why does it have a green sticker? I wonder what that means. Um, so, you know, all the specs here. So this is the pro. So, well, you know, when they add those, it just, they just bump up some stuff. Oh, moon is one lumen. That's cool. So, um, so for this pouch, where did I put it? Yeah. So, no, that's not the pouch. Well, this pouch, I wonder, it might be too big for this one, but I have that other big one that I unboxed last time. This one. So this one's huge. It's like the XL. So I was thinking that might be a good place for this one. Although, now that I look at it, might might be, this might still be too small. It might, this might fit yet an even bigger. <clears throat> so, once again, surrounded by knives, not finding a knife. Here it is. Okay. Still love it. Okay. Come on. Come on. This feels like it should have a magnetic enclosure. Oh, it can't. This way. Duh. Okay. Yeah, this way. All right. Thank you for being part of the Olight family. Your support is why we do this. Olight team. I put all that. Okay, so open with the yellow tab. Oh, cool. Look at that. Oh, my God. This is really nice. Okay, I guess it won't be going in there. It comes with its own friggin' thing. I forgot about all this stuff. So they have a little... Whoa! I have a little pull tab here. So... Oh, fuck. I forgot. How did I do that? I didn't have music that whole time. I'm sorry. Uh, it's got a pull tab. Do I need to open this before I pull the tab? Oh, yeah, let's see. No, do I? Thank you. 
What does this have to do with anything? Does it mean I'm supposed to pull it out through this end? Okay, so there's that, the instruction manual, which I'm, I think I'm going to have to read all these. That's it? What is all this stuff here? Okay. And then the lanyard is here, which is also not coming. So, I'm still trying to figure out what the hell that thing is supposed to be. Okay, whatever. Anyway, um, I do like um, I do like these uh, that Olight gives you with the flashlight. So I definitely put them on. As you know, I'm a lanyard fan. Uh, the charging cable. I'm just gonna have to keep. Um, yeah, this is a nice little thing. Oh, it's got even a D ring. Uh, wow, Molly, this is this is really nice. Drain hole. <laughs> uh, Okay. Um, interesting that they put the buckle through there. So maybe, oh, added, added protection to prevent it from whatever. Oh, look at this. It's very tactical. Uh, you can definitely, uh, the crenulated uh, bezels. Um, uh, if you know the guy, uh, too hard to hurt or hard to hurt, hard to hurt. Uh, you know, he always goes on and on. Your flashlight is your best, is your best uh, weapon. Um, he's like, it's, you're more likely to have it. You're not going to get in trouble for using it, etc. So tail light. Okay. I'm going to have to pull the tab out of there. Uh, definitely need to put the lanyard on here. There it is. So where did I put it? Here. So. Why is this so hard to get through? Oh, you know what? Oh, there it is. These they come with these genius little pins to get them through. Oh wow, the magnet. Look at the magnet take it. Look at that. You see that? It's magic. I was like, why is this not going through? So let's see. Let's put it through this way. Very good. So that makes it really easy. Cool. Look at that. And now let me pull the plastic tab out of there. There it is. It's a little yellow. Oh, wow. They cover the whole battery. Wow, they weren't playing, huh? I'm pretty sure it goes in the same way. Is that correct? Blech. This is, I believe this will be my first... Uh, Tail light flashlight. Oh, damn, yeah, I really don't know how to use this. I, I really don't know how to use this. Moonlight, okay. Two, three, four. Okay. That's cool. All right, whatever. Um, Pretty standard O light fare, so yeah, okay. Uh, might be a little too heavy duty for EDC flashlight. This might be. Did that just happen? That just happened. It like flashed on for a second. Okay, that's a good thing. Um, I am slightly thinking. This might be more of a go bag thing. It's I think this might be a little. I think this might be a little much. Yeah, I'm certain this is not too much. W but I did want at least one throw. So this is technically officially a throw. So okay. And then so that's obviously not going to be part of the 
EDC bag because it's got its own thing and yeah, it's a little a little bit small for that or well, it's about right. Anyway, um, still don't have anything to put in here. Um, interesting. Looks like I found the pen for this. Maybe put it here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is the Olight Perrin kit. I believe this is not the Perrin 2. This is just because I don't. Is there a Perrin 2? I think this. Anyway, uh, 120 throw, 2000 max. Uh, I don't know how that compares to the one I just opened. Uh, 300 throw, 1800 max. So that's interesting. This max is higher, but the throw is lower. So, yeah. So that means it's more of a directed beam. I don't know. Anyway, I, as you can see, I don't really know hardly anything about flashlights. Okay. Let's see. I thought they did it for money, but it turns out they're just like the Fast and Furious and do everything for family. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Oh my god, that's funny. If y'all ever saw them, Vin Diesel memes. No, I need to see that. I haven't seen, I've already mentioned this, I haven't seen a Fast and Furious movie for you know, over 10 years. Oh, by the way, anyway, um, over in uh, Silver Lake, they have the, the, the garage where the first one was. Um, I need to go back there and um, I took a picture of it once when I was driving by, but I don't know if I'll be able to find it again. Damn, this feels like what kind of plastic is this made out of? <sighs> um, FYI, the plastic that Olight uses is really thick. I mean, I mean, it's a shitty knife, but it, it wouldn't fully cut it. Like I had to, anyway. So that happened. Okay. So once again, uh, the magnetic thing. And uh, once again, the little plastic, the little yellow plastic insert thing. And okay. Uh, Oh, it's got a little foam thing on the top. Uh, and then they have a ribbon to pull it out. So let's see if that works. Oh, wait. Oh, it pulls this whole thing out. But this whole thing is heavy. What the hell? Okay. All right. So it is for that. Okay. Uh, remove the, pre uh, the protective film before use. And... I wonder if there's a tab in there. We shall soon see. And there is. Okay. So there we go. Likewise, it might be the whole thing. And it isn't. See? That's how they usually are. Just the one little plastic tab. So. Are you tell me there's zero charge on that? I hope I didn't put it in wrong. No, I think that's right. Does it tell you which way to put the battery in? I don't think it tells you, but I'm pretty sure it's right. I'm assuming it's this way. It's got to be right. Is it that? Is it literally dead dead? Come on. Can't be. Oh, wait. Hopefully there's not a tab at the bottom that I don't know about. No, I don't think there is. All right, fine. Let's flip it around. Let's live dangerously. Okay, so apparently it's completely dead. 
which is surprising to me. In which case, I'm going to have to charge it. Okay. Um, so. so here we go. Oh, it's for pulling the box out. That's what it is. Duh, Jesus. That's what it's for. It's for pulling the box out. Wow, I flipped out. I don't like sitting here so confused. So it's just a regular box. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is the headlamp part, which is one of the reasons why I got this, because I want to actually have a proper headlamp. Uh, that's, I think, uh, if you need to, like, extend it, you know, like, I think that's what it's for. Um, if you want it to pop out further or whatever, you need more space. Um, so there's the instruction manual. And um, okay, um, I'm going to have to figure out how this works. So there's uh, like a silicone thing. And then there we go, like that. So yeah, I mean, it looks pretty. Yeah, and it's magnetic. God, that's that's pretty. That's kind of nice, honestly. I think that's nice. I'm impressed. I, I'm actually really impressed. I think this stuff is. I, to me, this is like so high end. I mean, I, you know, we had mag lights growing up, which, looking back on, were just a whole lot of nothing. Um, so this should be the lanyard and uh, charging cable, which I'm going to need right away, both of which I'm going to need right away. So there's the charging cable. And here is a little hook. I wonder if that's how you're supposed to, this is the original version of how to thread the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the lanyard um, cable. It might be. Let's, let's see. We shall soon find out. Uh, firstly, let me start charging. <sighs> charging cables back here. Oh, wait. Oh, here. <sighs> there is entirely way too many things here I need to find yeah here Okay, and where's the O light? It was on the oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's definitely lighting up red. Can you light these while they're on? Yeah. Okay, there we go. It was dead. Wow, I think it's only got a couple of functions. Anyway, so there's that, and then next is this. And I think I'm right. I think this is the original version of how to thread this. I think so. Which I guess they figured out they could put on that tiny little paper clip and make it cheaper to do. Yeah, I think this is. Let's see. Yeah, I'm sure this is what it's for. Yeah, it doesn't work very good, though. It's, like, a lot harder to use. So I am going to... Shit, I hope I can find that. It's like the tiniest little sliver of metal. There's no way I'm going to find it. There it is. I just said no way. Oops, never mind. It wasn't it. There it is. Okay. 
So there's another reason why you need to be able to bend that part because I couldn't pick this up. I had to use my other hand. So this is innovation for you. This little tiny piece of metal, which is like super thin, you can barely see it, is less metal, less cost for them, but works better. You know? That, things like that make me happy. Because it's fascinating, you know? That you save money, material, etc., and then you have even better performance. Okay, so there we go. So lanyard attached to the parent. Okay. Uh, I do have a couple more Olights, but I'm going to spare you. And then Olight refills. I think these were free or like a dollar or something, which I don't need. Although I just realized I can carry one of these refills as a mini pen. Right? Yeah. Oh, but it's got the rubber on. I shouldn't. Anyway, never mind. Never mind. Because I have like, I carry the uh, the Swiss Army, you know, the replaceable, the refillable cartridges. I carry that in my wallet and I use it all the time because I don't, I don't do a good enough job of carrying an actual pen. So let's see. Um... Uh, F uh, four family, Vin Diesel memes had a phase. Okay, uh, I always throw the factory head straps away and just tie a bit of that flat ribbon elastic cord in its place. So much more comfy and much lighter. Is that right? And that's sad that you throw them away. You should send them to somebody. Somebody might want it. You know, because I, well, let's see. I like I like the third thing. Just tie a bit of that flat ribbon elastic cord in its place. Yeah. See, I don't like just the one. I, it just doesn't work for me. I need. I, I like that third one. For headlamps, I'm a big fan of Petzl. Okay. I think I've heard of them. I've had great experience with them, and the company product support is great. Oh, good. I've used Petzl lamps on tons of caving trips. Uh, you've gone caving? I, just, I don't think I would. I, I, I have nightmares like that where I caving. You know, I'm spelunking and like getting stuck in really tight. Oh, God, I, just, I have constantly have that dream. Um, Clives. Refills for what? Uh, the the Olight. So these are um, Olight refills. Fits open too, right? So it fits mine, right? So let's go. Open, open. I call it an open. Open to three pieces. So uh, doesn't doesn't say anything in particular, uh, but. Box is crushed, all this shit. There we go. So, yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Identical. So, there you go. So, I might as well pull this one out. See if all of them have the, yep, they all have the little rubber thing to keep it from drying out. So, I'm just going to put all of them in here. Oh, never mind. It only fits three. Okay. Oh well. And there you go. So I'll put this back. Next. I okay, fine. This is that free gift that came out last year. Um might be more than a year. Add light and fun to your keychain. Nine uh, X9R cell. So this was this limited edition. They just pulled it out for the sec. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's tiny. Look at, oh, it comes a little happy guy. So this is their little thing. I've got this interesting rubber band around there. Thank you. 
Okay. So, uh, how to operate on off. Loosen the head of the flashlight to turn the light on. Tighten it to turn the light off. 2.5 lumens, 30 hours, and a bunch of other stuff that I don't know what it means. So, and this is called the Handy Little Companion. Um, is that all that's in there? I guess. So, so, okay. Uh, loosen the head and there it goes. Wow. Very few lumens. Um, bloody brilliant, huh? Oh, yeah. That's great. And uh, they gave away a free battery for it. I thought. Okay. I thought so, but I guess not. Either that or it spilled out somewhere and I'm, I'll am i find it later, like underneath my bed or something. Yeah. Wait. No. Okay. I guess not. So anyway, and then uh, I got the Olight hole bulb. I already have one. Um, anyway. Um, but yeah, this thing's really cool. I mean, that's a true keychain light. What I'm thinking I'll do with this. God damn is talk about tiny tiny uh uh survival kit maybe i'll make like add this to my miniest of all survival kits i mean it's just cute as heck i love that i didn't know it was that small i mean i knew it was gonna be tiny but that's awesome okay so that's it for the um um finally it for the o light uh and um so I was wrong about the, the remember the open uh, one that I had. This is one that I actually had a second one of the one that closes with the zipper. So I realized I think I like the open one better. Seems more practical. But since this one zips up, maybe I can turn this into like like my third or fourth go bag. You know, like you know, like first tier, second tier until. Okay, so I'm going to start putting junk in here. 12 inch totes, 15 inside pockets. No, it's, oh my God, it is. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. There's a bunch of little ones over here. So, I mean, this might actually be a decent EDC bag. There are no D rings, so you'd have to carry it, which makes it not a good go bag. But you could probably figure something out with those straps. But at any rate, um, and it's got the the stiff wire along the outside so that it stays open. But yeah, I mean, I can really just start putting shit in here. I look forward to that. I could open the cold steel machete. You want to do that? Oh, um, I meant to show this back when they had a free giveaway, so you didn't have to buy anything, you just go in, um, and uh, you could get e either a, one of these flashlights from Harbor Freight. That, like, so I got this one for free as well. You know, these, these ones, you know, which for free is good. It's got a magnet on the back and I use this all the time. Like I leave it here, you know, at nighttime if I need to look for something on the floor. Um, and what I realized, okay, so, um, they have four colors. And it wasn't until afterwards I realized, you know, I have, you know, tons of these. I have them all the time, but I'll have them on the same color. Color coordinating these would be really useful depending on what you use it for, you know? So I just thought, you know, why not? So, yeah, this Grant's four pack microfiber cleaning cloth 12 by 12. Yeah. So four of these for free. Oh, let me show you. There. Um, yeah, I mean, they're normal size. I think my other ones are this same size. 
Oh, 12 by 12. Yeah, I think that's a pretty standard size. And I actually use these for my eyeglasses more than the eyeglass ones because I find that the longer fluff uh, cleans the oil better. I don't know. So that's kind of what it seems like to me. Okay. And I was going to open my cold steel machete. So like... You know, these are one of the, I, I picked this up at like a thrift store. Um, it fits a uh, GPS system. So it's got a hard case. So again, you know, I want to try and make little EDC kit type things out of these. I'm not quite sure what. I mean, for a while I was putting the extension cord for, I mean, the charging cable for my laptop in here, for example. Um, I've used different things for different whatever, but... Uh, um, uh, maybe I'll put the parent in this. And oh, here is the cold steel. Okay, so this is their new machete, by the way. Um, it's the cold steel axis machete. Does it look familiar? It's a ripoff of the Gerber Gator Jr. machete. I, well, not a ripoff. I mean, it's just a very basic standard thing saw back uh, with a whole dual edge blade designed for chopping and sawing textured rubber handle for secure grip nylon sheath included limited lifetime warranty outdoors bushcraft tool so this is their new thing i mean i mean as you can see it's bolted so um the sturdy nylon sheath is designed for years of hard use god that's a lot of verbiage blade length uh, 11 uh, 18 overall they call the steel high carbon so um axis machete yeah i mean it's it was like 18 bucks or something it was on sale um and then they even offered it for free as uh like a free gift if you order a certain amount um so anyway that's that so we shall see here Yeah, this stuff really is the best for these clamp packs. Uh, there's almost there is a little bit of a plastic insert up here. Uh, wow, these these nylon straps are super thin. Stitching is meh. Uh, yeah, wow, this is as cheap as anything that Cold Steel's done. So this is obviously the new Cold Steel. This did not. This was not a. a machete that existed under Lynn Thompson so um, Sawback is kind of pretty pointy. Surprised. They actually sharpened. They sharpened it. Uh, tip protector. And it's a machete. It doesn't need to be sharp. So it's definitely got a burr if you can hear that. But it's pretty sharp actually. Surprisingly sharp. And there's a ton of oil on here, so maybe it isn't stainless steel. Maybe it is a hard, high carbon steel, like a less than a 1055, because they'd say so, because their other machetes are 1055. So, um, all right, let's see. And zero retention. And they have a pretty wide plastic thing here for that saw back. Listen to that. So sheath is. Oh, okay. Wait, you can fit part of the thing in there, so it's actually not bad um yeah okay it's it's not too terrible uh and it's got buttons instead of velcro not 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 uh not displeased about that and this 
barely fits over it. It actually kind of doesn't, in fact. Yeah. Ah, I can't quite get it on. So, yeah. Ow! Fuck me. Okay. Makes me want to pull it out a little. So I pulled it out a little bit further, see if maybe the strap will go on a, a different part, but it just won't. And then you see that fray? That's like not good. What on earth? Wow, that is gummed up all to high heaven. Is that missing a spring? Uh, do the scissors on the Gerber dime not have a spring? That's kind of surprising. I thought it did. And I let way too much orange juice flow down into that, so that's dirty as shit. Use your shit, guys. I do not see a spring on that whatsoever, do you? Oh, there is a spring. There it is. Maybe it's just gummed up. Yeah, it's just gummed up. Okay, I need to take better care of that. All right, I'm going to have to clean that. Okay. But regardless, that does not look like it wants to fasten. So let's see if I can. There, got it. Okay, so anyway, and then. Oh, interesting. They even put one of these things on there so you can actually tighten that. I believe. No? Oh, okay. It's on there permanently. That's weird. That's just permanently on there. So, but yeah. I, whatever. I mean, the thing is, this has a magnet on it too. So I wouldn't want just a piece of elastic. I mean, yeah. How much is this? Not that much, but, and, uh, this is very soft and satiny back here. Um, and then, again, it comes with that little sticker, which I think you're supposed to be able to put probably back here or something to make it a little softer. What is this? I won a grand prize off one of the backpacking channels Christmas Ga a few years back. The Waymark pack came with a couple of Vaunt headlamps, and I've never looked back. Okay, Vaunt. And Waymark. Okay, I don't know those packs. I, you know, is it Ultralight? I mean, those start getting so expensive. Gone. I've never heard of that brand. I'm definitely more climbing brand oriented. Petzl is one of the most trusted among climbers, cavers. Okay, cool. Good to know. Thanks for sharing that information. Okay. Oh, good Lord. It's over two hours. I think this is my longest yet. I really overdid it. And I'm sorry about that. Oh, fuck. It's five o'clock. I got to go. Um, anyway, OCD for UBC is going to be starting now, but I gotta, I gotta run out. I didn't realize it was this late. Son of a beach. Okay. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I've, how am I going to make it? Okay. Uh, Waymark is ultralight handmade in Utah. Yeah. It's gotta be really, it's gotta be really expensive. It sounds, you know, super high end though. Okay, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Two hours and 20 minutes. Good Lord Almighty.